Hi, in this chapter, we're going to discuss measurement. And measurement is going to be really important before we start geometry because measurement is all about um, length, weight, capacity, and we're going to learn um, it, the system that we're used to, which is our customary system, and, but also the metric system. So um, I think it's always good to start with something more familiar. So we're going to start with what the units that we use here in the United States. To begin, um, in 5.1, we call the U.S. units that we use, like inches, feet, right, um, ounces, pounds, that is called the U.S. customary units. And even though we call it the U.S. customary units, um, a fun fact is that there are a couple of nations out there that also use this, which is Liberia and Myanmar. Um, which may not be common knowledge because the U.S. is so large, but these uh, countries also use it. Okay, so um, a measurement is just a number that describes the amount of something. For example, um, measurements are taken for length, right, area, capacity, weight, temperature, time. There's just so many different types of measurements that we can take. And the, again, the two types I note that we use is the metric system and the U.S. customary me uh, measurement system. And we're just going to go ahead and start with the customary system. So here in the customary system, we'll start with length. And length is uh, just the distance from one end to another end, right? And so there are a few uh, measurements, uh, units, right? Inch, foot, yard, and mile. So in the U.S., we use inches, feet, yard, and mile, and um, we kind of convert back and forth with that, right? And so some common ways we use these units are a length of a piece of paper, which is 8.5 by 11 inches. Um, the height of an individual, we usually use feet and inches. A soccer field, we, uh, we use in yards. Um, and when we run, we usually say we run in certain miles or will we drive a certain number of miles. So here are some equivalents of unit of length. So the length itself will be inches to feet, feet to yards, and then feet to miles. And of course, we can always get the number of inches in a mile or a number of, of feet in um, a a mile or inches in a yard, right? We can do all of this by using these pieces here. Now, um, in order to convert, we have to be able to use these fractions correctly. And if you've ever taken like a basic chemistry class, you definitely have seen these unit conversion factors before. We call them factors because that's what we're going to multiply with. So if I needed to go from a longer to shorter units, meaning a mile to inches, I would use this column and I would multiply. If I had to go to shorter to longer units, meaning inches to miles, then I would use this column here and multiply. So the word factor itself implies that we will multiply somewhere these pieces, these fractions. Now, the reason why we want to is we have to recall back in chapter one when we were doing some a little bit of measurement, you know, with the pecans and the pies and the soil and the yards. Um, we we use this to reduce out units. So that's the goal is to really reduce out units. Okay, and when we multiply by these conversion factors, what we're really multiplying is by one. For example, let's take this one. If I said that 12 inches is equal to one foot, I could easily divide each side by the entire one foot, right? And then I would get 12 inches per one foot is equal to, and notice that these entirely reduce out and something divided by itself is one. So notice that when we say factors, we are multiplying 
but we're multiplying by one. And we manipulate these conversion factors here, these unit equivalents, to be a conversion factor because we're really not changing the original problem. We're just rewriting the original problem by multiplying by something that's one, right? But we manipulate one, especially with these unit equivalents, to get conversion factors. I easily could have divided each side instead by 12 inches and got one on the left and one foot per 12 inches, which would have been the shorter to longer conversion factor. So um, not to be alarmed if some students see the numbers like 3 and 12, they're like, well, you're just like, you, ha you can't just multiply fractions. You have to like top and bottom, each side, right? All those algebra rules we remember. But we're again, we're, we're still abiding by all those ar arithmetic rules by just manipulating one. So if we, mani if we multiply anything by one, it's just itself. So we're OK. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, some some examples. So the first thing you say nine feet to inches, and some of you are like, oh, that's um, that's 108, right? 108 inch. I know I know that because you work in construction, you work in the hardware store, you work somewhere, you worked with your um, parent or sibling enough to know these conversions internally. You've internalized them, which is amazing. Um, but then we want to go back to that process, which how you got from nine feet to 108 inches, right? And so that process will help you when we get to more challenging problems with conversion factors and also metric system. So um, let's just think about how s these simple examples here and think about in more depth the process and really just think about the process that we can apply to more challenging problems. So in order to convert nine feet to inches, we could use that analogy that we're going from longer to short and notice that if we go to long to short then we're going to use this column and since I want to convert feet to inches I would use the conversion factor that has inches and feet in it so I would have to multiply 9 feet to 12 inches per 1 foot Again, we say factors because we're multiplying. So the first thing we want to do is write out 9 feet. And feet, and I'm just going to do the abbreviations as we go. So feet is FT. Now, it's very important. You can't make up your own abbreviations. Abbreviations for units is very specific and very tedious. So you cannot make up your own, like, feet is like FE. Right, it's not, because that's already a unit taken from somewhere else. As we see abbreviations and move forward in this chapter, you're going to see tons of different types of abbreviations, which you realize, oh, I just can't use anything I want. So as I go through the problems, I'll address the abbreviations. So instead of giving it all at once. So feet is FT and inches is IN. So those are pretty simple, right? So 9 feet, and then here, you'll multiply by the conversion factor. So the conversion factor we said was 12 inches per 1 foot. Now, we don't always write it, but we know it's there. Okay? You could write 9 feet over 1. That way you can see the fraction and align numerators with numerators and denominators with denominators. Because at this point you can see that the feet will cancel out or reduce out. And you're left with, notice only inches, those are the only units left. And then you get 9 times 12 inches. And 9 times 12 is 108 inches. So this is the process in which you want to go through to, to understand the process so you can apply to more challenging problems. So here, if I go to 7 yards and I want to rewrite 7 yards in feet, I notice I'm going from a long to short. So I'm still using that same column. So here I would write 7 yards and yards 
is yd. And if you want, put it over 1 so you see the fraction. And then you're going to multiply by a conversion factor. So let's go ahead and look yards to feet. If I need to go long to short, I use this column. If I have to go to yards and feet, I use this conversion factor, 3 feet per yard. So 3 feet per 1 yard. Okay, and then you multiply. Now, at this point, you can see that the yards reduce out, as we always know, and the only units left are feet. So that's always the goal. The goal is when we're converting units, the goal is to always have all the units in the problem to reduce out except the one that you need in the end. And you need it in the numerator in order for it to stay on top, right? Okay, so let's keep going. So now we can see it's 7 times 3 feet and then it'll be 21 feet. Now some of you can, again can see this but we just want to see the process. Now let's try doing something like feet to miles. Now if we're doing feet to miles that's going to be shorter to longer. And that means that we're going to be using the short to longer column and we're converting feet and miles, so I would want to use this conversion factor, one mile per 5280 feet. So again, um, miles, we know feet is FT, but then miles is equal to MI. That's what we use. Do not use M. You use M by itself, that's meters, and that's in the metric system. So it's already taken. You can't take M, but you have to use MI. Okay, so let's write out 12356 feet. Let's write it over 1 so we keep that consistency. And now we need to multiply by a conversion factor to reduce out feet. So we do know that there are there's one mile per 5,280 feet. And now we see that feet can reduce out and we're left with 12,356 divided by 5,280 and then miles. And we can just go over to the calculator. No one says you have to know it all, right? So 12,356 divided by 5280. And we get 2.34, da, da, da. So when we do this, we'll go ahead and just round to one decimal place. And if there's a problem that designates a certain number, like two decimal places, three, de then go ahead and do that. But when none is given, we usually just go one decimal place past our value. So notice that we're given whole numbers. So one decimal place would be the tenths place. So just one decimal place out. So this will be 2.4 uh, is less than 5, so 2.3. and then miles. Now notice when I multiplied, I noticed that it was 12,356 times 1, which is 12,356. 1 times 5,280 is just 5,280. So I just went ahead and used um, the, the times 1 and I just did that mentally. Okay, so now let's look at a problem that we have to use more than one conversion factor. So now, notice that we want to convert yards to miles. So we're still doing, we're going to do short to long. And if I go up here, short to long is still this column. So no matter what, I'll still be using that column. But now I need to go from yards 
to miles and there's no unit equivalence from yards to miles but I do have one for yards to feet and then feet to miles so I'm going to use two conversion factors in order to go from yards to miles shorter to longer I'm going to use these bottom two conversion factors I'm going to use one yard per three feet and one mile per 5,280 feet and we're going to multiply so we'll have three things multiplying why because I need to reduce out the units of yards and feet and feet uh, and to get left with miles on top. So here, um, let me go ahead and write out um, 4,325 yards. And let me put it over one just to be consistent. And then we're going to have um, not one but two conversion factors, right? Here's going to be a conversion factor, and then here's going to be a conversion factor. And I hope that I can reduce out everything in the end uh, except miles. So now let's do go ahead and work towards yards to feet. I do know that there are three feet per three, uh, one yard. And I do know that there are well, there is one mile per 5,280 feet. So once again, it's short to long, so I'm going to use these ones here. Now, notice that I have um, yards and yards that can be reduced out and feet to feet. And even though I'm using two conversion factors, I'm not left with two units. They all reduce out except for miles, and that's what I needed in the end. So now I apply the multiplication. I see 4,325 times 3 times 1 divided by 1 times 1 times 5,280. And then all what's left is miles. So just writing this a little nicer, we do see um, 4,000. 325 times 3, and then you could put times 1, but you don't have to because it's just redundant. So then we'll get 12,975 divided by 5,280. So let's divide that number by 5,280. And again, everything that's given to us is in whole numbers, so we can just round to the nearest next decimal place, which would be the tenths place, which is one decimal. So here, if I want to round to the first decimal, I have to look at my test digit 5, and since that's 5 or greater, then I would have to round this 4 up. So it'll be 2.5 miles. So we don't always use just one or the, uh, you know, one, convert. we use however many conversion factors we need to get to the units in the end on the numerator. So some students don't really need a list of conversion factors. They notice that they need miles on top, so right away they know that it's going to be that one. So if you want to remember the unit equivalence, you can, and whatever unit you need on top, then you throw that on top. If, For example, if we knew we needed inches, we know we need inches on top, and therefore we would use that one. So it's really how you develop the skill and the process. I think knowing short to long, long to short, and these little tables are, very, are so useful too. Okay, so um, a hardware store has two sales on tubing. Three yards of tubing A is on sale for $5.49. Two feet of tubing B sale price is $1.88. Since either tubing is acceptable for your project, which tubing is less expensive? So there's a lot going on in this example, right? The first thing we want to notice is the goal. The goal is to see which of the tubing is less expensive. I do notice tubing A is 549, but that's for three yards, right? The other one is um, tubing B, which is 188, which sounds a lot cheaper, but that's because you're only getting two feet. So the first thing we need to do is see how much each of these tubings are per 
unit and the unit we need is the same so it just depends on what you want so you but you have got to get them all down to the same units so the first thing we need to do before we even decide is we want to be able to convert everything to the same units okay so we just pick um, two feet is 188 so I guess we can just convert to being a to feet you know so um, we'll convert to feet so we'll go to yards to feet okay so here here's two being a And that's going to be three yards. Okay, and we can put it over one to be consistent. All right, times, and the conversion factor is, and in this case, I know I need feet on top. So whatever it is, I know that there's three feet in one yard. And if I need feet in the end, feet will be in the numerator. So right away, I know that it's going to be three feet per one yard. Or you can tell that um, you're going from long to short and then use that first column and grab the conversion factor. I just want to show both ways so you ha can see both ways. So the yards can reduce out and we're left with feet and we see that we have 3 times 3 which is 9. So we have 9 feet of tubing A. Tubing B is already given to us in feet, so two feet. So we have those pieces. The second part is we're now we're going to find the unit cost. And we learned about unit cost in the very first chapter because we not only want to see how many how much it is for each package, but also like per unit. Since our unit is in feet, I see that I'm paying um for tubing A, I'm paying $5.49 for 9 feet. And in tube B, I'm, playing, I'm paying $1.88 for 2 feet. Now, that seems like, oh, the, I'll just get the 188 That's awesome. But then you're like, no, that's not really true because you're getting less feet. And you're getting nine feet for five dollars. So I we don't know which is really cheaper unless we go ahead and find that unit cost. So let's go ahead and do that. So find the unit cost. And that will really tell us per foot how much we're paying. So let's go ahead and do tubing A. So the unit cost would be dollars per foot. So we know that we're paying five forty nine per nine feet. So um, we don't want to leave it as a fraction. We'll go ahead and use the calculator to see, because we want to round to the nearest cent, right? Because dollars is in cents, right? So we get 61 cents. So dollars, so it's 61 cents per foot. Now let's go ahead and do tubing B. Tubing B is a dollar eighty-eight per two feet. So a dollar eighty-eight per two feet is ninety-four cents. So this is ninety-four cents per foot. So which is cheaper? And some of you would say, well, it depends how much you need. Well, if they only have two packages, and let's say you're in a class that's probably going to need the tubing again, because maybe you're like in a plumbing course, you know. Um, so which one would you pick? So overall, when they ask them which tubing is less expensive, it's really finding unit cost. It's finding the dollar per unit. So the dollar per foot in this case. If you were buying toilet paper, it'd be usually those are in like in inches, each little square of the toilet paper. And they say, oh, it's like at Costco, they say 0 0.001 cent per inch, you know. So it just depends on the unit 
itself and the cost itself. In this case, we're doing tubing with feet and dollars. So we can see here from the two situations that definitely what we thought was more expensive wasn't actually more expensive per foot. So here we would say tubing A is less expensive per foot.